Hello and welcome to Cobase Alpha. Uh, this is uh, SMB here, uh, broadcasting you from Cobase Alpha, uh, where we have a new recruit, um, which I'll talk to about later. A uh, little alien has joined us, and um, we need to find a name for him. So there'll be a little uh, chance for you to, um, to do some input uh, for that uh, that naming uh, in a little while. So um, just wanted to start out with a quick review of what we did last time. So if we go over to our project, um, we spent quite a lot of time building out this request object. And it's pretty much done now. So I did a couple of things off stream. I was persuaded by, I think it was uh, QD on the last um, the last episode, not to actually build out the whole of the um, response object. We'll do that tonight. But um, I've done a couple of things. If you remember, one of the things I noticed was when we did the... Um, the automatic uh, construction of the, um, of the of the of the the classes from JSON. I wasn't very happy with the application. Um, so the um, it was called attributes, and uh, so I fixed that. So that's off. I did that off stream. It's simply a matter of turning that into a dictionary, uh, dictionary of string string, which is very similar to what we did with the slots. And um, the other thing I did was I got rid of a an extraneous class that we had. So I had, um, with this class here called support interfaces, I actually misspelled a version of that called support interfaces, so I, I deleted that. Um, all that's up on um, on GitHub. If you'd like to go to our GitHub, then um, you can go here. Um, all the code that we do on the stream is up there, plus some other things I've done in the past. The, the bot that we've got in chat is also up there. That's very much a work in progress, but it's, it's relatively full featured. Um, so um, the Git um, history will show you that we committed the episode four code and they made those two changes. So to sort out the attributes and to get rid of the extraneous class. Um, so that's all I've done other than push it all up into GitHub. Um, so I thought we'd start off today by looking at the response object. And this way we can actually get uh, Alexa to say something back when we speak to it. Because uh, currently it's just obviously it's just um, it's bombing out every time. And we did have difficulty last time actually get to understand us. But uh, that will come with uh, with some more work on the interaction model that we're going to develop for it. So I don't really want to concentrate too much on getting that, that part um, really down at the moment. We need to actually... Um, sort out our web service so that it's going to respond. I'm just going to start some music in the background. So do tell me if this is too loud or too quiet. Um, we should be having, there we go, so we've got our relaxed daily going in the background. Um, if it is too loud let me know and I'll just adjust the uh, desktop audio a bit. If you can't hear it, it doesn't really matter, it's just something in the background. Okay. So let's go to the Alexa documentation. So this is on the Amazon developer site. And we've got, um, we're here looking at the response. And this is the uh, request and response JSON formats. Um, this is the response format. Uh, if we see here that it's relatively straightforward, at least it looks quite straightforward. There's a bit of complexity involved in it, especially around these directives. But we're not going to worry too much about directives um, initially. We're going to... Um, concentrate on actually getting, to, getting some responses, some speech back from it. Um, I noticed we've got some uh, viewers now in the, in, the, uh, in the stream. If you'd like to say hello on chat, please, just so I know you're all there and you can hear me, uh, and give me a quick audio report, that'd be brilliant. Um, also, um, Zujin, hello Zujin. Uh, if you haven't followed the stream, the best way for actually getting to know when we do broadcast is by following, you'll get alert that way. As you can see, we're 90% of the way to our follower goal. So if you haven't followed, I'd really, really appreciate a follow. That'd be fantastic. Help us get us towards that affiliate um, that affiliate goal that we've got initially. Um, so this slot at 9 o'clock, which is roughly after the dev chatter stream, is one of the slots I think I'm going to try and um, nail every week. The other slots will still be a bit fluid until I manage to work out exactly when they can be. Um, they'll be probably a lot earlier than this. Um, this is this will be the kind of the evening stream in the UK. It's in the evening at the moment, about nine o'clock in the evening. So that's um, that's what I'm thinking of. Um, but um, 
I will eventually settle into some, some kind of schedule. Um, but it's difficult at the moment to work out what that's going to be. But so as I say, this Monday morning, this Monday evening slot rather, um, after Dev Chatter is uh, is what I'm aiming for. Uh, okay, so um, let's have a look what we've got here with this uh, this response body. Uh, so we've got basically a couple of um, attributes here: version and then a group of, uh, of session attributes, and then we've got basically a, a it's very similar to the request a response body which contains different types of um, things so the speech that can be output there's a card which is basically um, a visual uh, output uh, text and image in this case um, which uh, some Alexa devices do have a display and of course your, your mobile phone or your, your tablet can have Alexa in it uh, and they you can have a visual um, output from those and then you get something called reprompt, which is all about really trying to build up a dialogue with the the user of the uh, the Echo or the uh, the Alexa enabled device. And then there's these directives, which we'll look at a bit later. And then there's a a, a, um, a parameter so should end session, which means it's the end of the interaction um, if it's that set to true. So let's um, let's have a look at this. So we've got uh, a version, which is a string, and then a, a set of uh, session attributes. Let's build um, that uh, to begin with in our um, in our library. So if we go back over to our project, you can see what we've got here. Uh, the first part, first uh, project we've got here is um, our our web API, and we've got an Alexa controller here. It doesn't do anything at the moment. All it does is take in a um, a request from the body of the um, the request that comes in of HTTP, and then it um, it basically just grabs that into this request variable. And we can stick a breakpoint here if we want to, just to see what it says. Uh, other than that, it doesn't do anything. So we want to actually get tonight get it to do something to actually respond. Um, and over in the uh, library, which is the library we're going to be building and eventually publishing up onto to NuGet. Um, we've got a request type, and the the root of that is the Alexa request, which is this object here. And you can see it's got um, a similar kind of idea. It's got a uh, a version, a session, uh, some kind of context information, and then it's got a request body. Um, and um, the request body has got this uh, customized uh, JSON converter that we, we developed last time. To basically create um, the different types of responses that um, so requests that uh, can be um, the payload of the of the JSON. So we concentrated mainly on um, there's there's four basic um, requests that we were looking at, and we implemented two of them. The first was the launch request, which doesn't have any uh, special information in it. And the second was the intent request, which is the um, where we have the dialogue going on, and the um, we actually get the information coming from the intent, which we built in um, in Alexa. So we'll go through that again in a bit. But let's actually get start get started with a bit of code. Um, so let's go and find our library, and what we want to do is create another folder in here, which is going to be our response folder. And the first thing we want to do is to have a new class in here, uh, which is going to be our Alexa response. So let's call it Alexa response. Let's spell it correctly. Okay, so let's make this a public class. And if we pop over to um, to our documentation again, we can see what we need to actually populate this with. There's actually a version, uh, a session attribute, and then there's going to be um, a response. And that's the response body. And then there's a um, there's a few other things we can actually um, include in this, but that's basically it. Just those three, three different things. Um, so, um, as I say, we did want to, I did suggest that I'd do all this uh, offline, but um, the the consensus seemed to be that uh, as the point of code base alpha streams is to do things from scratch and just show you how it all, it's all done even though it's, a lot of it's kind of kind of 
wrote, wrote work. Um, I thought well, we, we might as well do that. So we've got a version, set attributes and response, which we're going to create. So let's have a look at doing that. So, um, so we want a couple of uh, uh, properties here. So we have a public string, and it was it, we can call it version. And we have to uh, an automatic get and set, and we want to decorate this with um, some attributes from the um, the Newton Soft package. And so the version is actually um, a required field. If we go back to our documentation. Um, it's required you can see here so the other ones so the response is required as is the um, as is the uh, the version but the session attributes is not a required uh, value and this is going to be important because we're going to be building up this response uh, within our API API and we need to know what we're going to, what's required and what's not uh, and I thought what we'd do with uh, to actually build these um, these responses is actually create a, a little um, fluent API to do that. So let's uh, pop back to our um, to our project. So in this one, we want to put the JSON required attribute on that one, and we need to bring the Newton soft package in to our class, and um, this is a going to be a JSON property. JSON property and the property name is version. So that's in lower the lowercase v. That's the actual name of the um, the property that's in the JSON. As you can see here, it's got a lowercase v. So it's this version. Then we've got session attributes. This is the next one. So let's include that. So um, this has got an example of key value. So that tells me it's going to be basically a dictionary. I'm not sure what the value part is yet. We'll figure that out later. So we'll just call that an object. Um, but let's uh, let's just kind of code that in. So um, so we want a public um, dictionary, and that's going to be a dictionary of string. And so we're not really quite sure what the attribute is, so we'll just make it an object for now. Let's spell dictionary correctly, shall we? And um, we'll put our getter and setter on that. Okay, and we need to give it a name and we'll call it session attributes. Okay, and um, we want to decorate that with our JSON property. And that's um, lowercase s session attributes. Um, and we need to indicate that this is uh, a value which is not required, but actually can be missing. But when we construct our JSON, if it is missing, we don't want to actually build any JSON for it. We don't want it to have an empty um, piece of JSON with the value of session attributes. So we need to decorate this again with a, with with a, uh, telling um, Newtonsoft how to handle um, null values. Um, and there is a there is a attribute we can do that with, which is the null handling um, null value handling. And this is a, an enum, and we're going to ask it to ignore um, this attribute if our dictionary session attributes is is null but basically what that means is not going to construct that into the json when we could do a, a serialized object it's, it's in that that's null it's not going to bother with it um, the next thing we're going to look at is the um the response so um once again public uh we need we'll just call it response body just to be kind of um Keep in line with what we did with um, requests, where we called a request body, response body, um, response, and yeah, and set, and let's spell things properly. Oops, response. Okay, um, let's decorate that. 
So it's got also a required property. If we look back over here, you can see that response is required. And you can see this actually says it's a map, which is our clue that our dictionary was the right thing to, to have chosen. And um, let's go pop back over here and decorate that again. And it was called response. Okay. Okay, so uh, that's our Alexa response. Uh, what we need to do is create this response body. So let's do that next. So we'll add another class called response body. Okay, make it public. And oh, hello, Brandon. Uh, nice to see you. Thank you very much for um, for popping by the stream. Good to see you. And we're getting a few viewers in there, so that's really nice. So um, if you do, um, if you haven't followed the channel, please please do so, and uh, that way you'll get to know when we broadcast. It's been a bit haphazard broadcasting um, over the past uh, two weeks, so we try and find our feet. But as I was saying earlier, we're going to try for this time nine o'clock uk time or utc on a monday to follow dev chatter as one of our kind of permanent slots i'm going to give that a go and see how it goes um so um although you, if you follow me on this on discord or whatever on on twitter um you will get notification that we're going live um uh, tell me a follow if you want to twitch to tell you okay so let's go back and have a look at what this looks like um Okay, over here. So we've got a response object here. So the response object is below. So so none of these objects are required, but we've got um, some kind of speech output, some kind of card output, a re a reprompt which contains speech that's going to be output. Um, and this is, as it says here, to use if your service keeps session open after sending the response. So this is like a dialogue that goes on. Or if um, if the user says some, something and you want to prompt and say, I didn't understand, could you say that again? That's the kind of thing we do with reprompt. And we'll look at that as we build our interaction model up. We've got our should end session. And we've got these things called these directives. And the really the only directive we're going to be, a set of directives really, we're going to be these interface dialogue these uh, dialogue interface references but we'll look at that in a moment so um, let's have a look so we've got uh, output speech and uh, output speech is down below and it looks okay so you can see there's two types of output speech there's plain text and there is um, this um, speech markup markup language uh, version of that so let's have a look at what we can do here so output speech that's got a type text either text or ssml and then something called play behavior which is seems to, to be yeah this is to do with the um the game engine which we're not going to be using so we may not need to include play behavior. Then we've got a card object which has a type and that simple standard link account ask for permission consent. So we're not going to be using the link account one but we might want to use at least simple and standard. That's got a title as well, a type sorry. And then we've got a reprompt which is that just contains output speech so I think we need to start using a bit of kind of object oriented design here so to make sure that we get all this in the best kind of form for the future so we're not going to just code things directly let's get the basics down first so I can see that we've got um, two types of speech at least two types of card and then we've got the uh, the reprompt, um, and all of them have got this type. 
So it's almost if type is like a base thing they've all got because that basically says what kind of response it is. So let's start off. Um, let's start off with a response type object. Uh, let's create a response type. So what we'll do, we'll create it as an interface, I think. Uh, let's go up and create, add another folder called interfaces. Um, and we we'll add an interface. And we'll call it I response type. Yeah, that sounds okay. I response type. Okay. Um, what's the best thing to do here? I think the best thing to do is just to include a type. Yeah. Yep, let's just do that. So public string type get set and if we pop back over to our uh, Alexa response we can grab these two attributes here and pull them across and this is going to be type and get the using statement in for JSON Okay, so we've got that. Um, the next thing we've got really is um, we've got speech. Um, and there's two types of speech. There's plain text and the SSML speech. So let's create another interface for speech. So we'll call this iSpeech. I hope you, if you've got any questions about how we kind of thinking about this, just throw them into chat. Um, yeah, so so the first one we create is a, a class. I want to be an interface there. So that and the I speech interface public class sorry public interface. Speech, um, and that really is. We just need to inherit from our response type there, and that really defines um, the speech interface. Yep, that sounds okay. So let's have a look at card. I think card is pretty similar. So let's add um, a new iCard interface. Public interface. And that will also, we're going to inherit from our res response type. I don't think we need anything else on there. I just need to bring that in. Okay. Um, right. And I think we can start to build out some of the attributes on the on the response body now. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, let's get, just make sure we think it through. response let's go back and have a look at our layout so it's out yes it's just output speech and then card and we got reprompt which we'll worry about in a second then we got a boolean and then we got another thing here which is an array of directives which we'll worry about in a second as well so let's let's go here um yeah okay so um, these were all um, non-required, they're optional kind of um, things that we can put in here. So let's start off by building up our, um, our pop properties. So this is going to be um, some speech. And obviously it can be either a, um, a, a text speech or SSML speech. So let's 
call it output output speech because that was the name of the um, the JSON attribute and we've got our get set there let's bring the using in we need for that which is our our interfaces and we can now decorate that with uh, a JSON property okay and that was called output speech lowercase o and um, also this is one of these ones which was um, was uh, optional so we want this null the null handling null value handling I think it was called We need to bring in the, the using statement, which we can do by clicking on the light bulb there. And it was null handling value, and we want to ignore. So we don't want to actually build anything uh, from there if we don't include any speech. So we only output card information, for example. Let's copy this. We've got um, we've got a card which we can output, and um, we created the iCard interface. So let's make this uh, type iCard and we'll call it card so once again this is the um the kind of visual output which um Alexa devices can produce if they've got a screen or if you catch it to your they're in, the, in your mobile phone or your tablet or on your pc or whatever and then we had a reprompt so let's create that this is reprompt once again we have the null handling um And unfortunately, in this case, we need to create an object because um, we need to create a class there. Because the um, if you go if you go back and have a look, we can see that in the um, the reprompt, it actually just wraps an output speech element. So um, we need to create something for that. So let's create a reprompt um, response. We'll do that here. So reprompt. Make that public. And what we can do is simply go back and grab that. Um, we can grab that first line there, the first couple of lines. And just pop those into the reprompt. Once again, bring in our usings. And that should take care of reprompts so we don't need these so what else do we have in our in our um, required elements so we had uh, okay we had should end session which is a simple boolean so we can and that's a yes it says it's not required so we don't need to mark that as required so let's uh, build that okay so public bool um, should end session and set and we just put a um, a property cost top of that which will be um, simply the JSON JSON property of um, should end session So remember, we're only going to be—we're not going to be deserializing um, here. We're just going to be um, serializing our response back to uh, to the Alexa device, the, to the Ask Kit up in the cloud, using this. So we don't have to worry too much about going the other direction. Okay. So, and the other thing was, was it directives? Let's go and have a look. Directives. Yeah. So this is an array of directives. Uh, we'll look at what uh, what what these I think we're not worried about audio players or video players maybe the last two we'll be interested in so let's just let's just create um, that and once again it's um, a not not a required object so um, so and as, as we we need a list of these 
Um, and I think what we'll do, we'll follow the same approach as the iSpeech and iCard, as there's obviously variants on that. We'll create an iDirective type, an interface type, and um, that will be directives. Get and set that. Um, and we want to copy one of these down. So this is uh, directives. Um, not handling ignore yes uh, so we need to create an iDirective interface type so let's add that um, so this is once again an interface not a class um, and let's go and have a look at what those directive types actually look like Okay, so let's have a look at the dialog interface. Okay, dialog. So this looks quite complicated, so we probably won't worry about it too much in our initial build. So we want to look at what it looks like, please. So it's got a type, just like um, the request type has a type. Yeah, that's good. Um, let's have a look, quick look at uh, one of the other directive types. I think we can just derive this from um, from request type, response type rather. So what was the other one we had? We had something called display interface reference. Yeah, that's got a type as well. Okay, so what we'll do, we'll just inherit from um, our response type. Okay, five more followers for the goal. Yes, five more followers, uh, Fuel Stable. My day job, well, I'm, I'm actually a development manager, so I run a team of six devs and a, a DBA for a company in Birmingham. And Birmingham UK. Um, we do um, website development, internal web apps um, and also um, ones which interact with our customers, mainly um, um, transactional transactional in nature. So um, although I'm actually a development manager, I'm extremely hands-on. I spent all day, for example, um, coding up a new part of our web app. So um, I spend probably 75% of my time actually coding and 25% of my time doing manager stuff uh, which is really great because you often if you kind of have to make the move from being a, a dev or lead dev or whatever up into management then you have to leave the coding behind and I really couldn't do that I, I'm a died in the wall coder really so um, I'm very lucky to be in a job where I'm expected um, and encouraged to actually write code. Um, I think it's really important as well when you're managing people, um, managing developers, that uh, they they trust that you can actually code yourself. I think um, I think Brendan over on DevChatter says that his criteria is you should be able to do the job as well as your devs. Well, I'm never going to be able to do that. I'm not a front-end dev. You know, give me JavaScript, I'll muddle through. Um, I'm not going to be your man for designing UIs. Um, I really w prefer to work with back-end stuff. 90% uh, meetings, yeah, meetings can be a problem. Um, the big answer to um, being stuck in meetings is, A, working from home. So I try to work from home as much as I can, which I can get away with, really. And um, that means I, I work, work on Skype. Um, so... If meetings, face-to-face -face meetings can really drag on, but if you've got an hour in your diary for a Skype meeting, then it usually kind of focuses um, attention uh, because people kind of basically log off at the end of that time. Whereas walking out of a meeting when you're sat, you know, face-to-face -face is a bit more difficult. Pressing that red button to, um, 
to log off your uh, Skype meeting is, is a lot easier to do. Um, so it, it can be it can be a challenge having lots and lots of meetings, and, and when you're in the zone, the last thing you want is to actually excuse me have to stop what you're doing and um, and start talking to people in meetings. But yeah, it's uh, I, I find myself um, in a lucky position really about to be a manager. Um, and code. So yes, it's a .NET. Uh, we're a .NET um, team. Our main applications are all full framework because we're a bit restricted what, whether we can go to .NET Core immediately. Now we do have some .NET Core stuff. We have quite a cool PWA which is written in .NET and a few other little applications for use internally. But because um, all of our applications um, interact with either ADFS version 2 or um, with Dynamics 365. We are limited in moving over to the foot to the um, to .NET Core frameworks, um, mainly because um, when we're working with um, ADFS 2, then um, it's not supported uh, in uh, in .NET Core. And similarly, the, um, all the SDKs for Dynamics 365 are um, .NET 4.5.2 or higher. They haven't actually moved them to .NET Core. When they do, it's going to be a big sigh of relief. But we have managed to do lots of kind of peripheral projects where we've introduced uh, .NET Core. We're on 2.2 mainly. So we have a couple of internal apps and some web APIs. Um, which are all built in, uh, in .NET Core. Um, I do like my devs to use the latest technologies, um, to use the latest released version of uh, Visual Studio. I don't want people to be feel like they're trapped in the past, but we are limited at the moment um, with our main website, or web application really, to, um, to using full framework. But you know, I'm looking forward to the time when we can actually change that. Okay, so where were we? We were looking at this I directives. Um, I think we can probably leave I directive at that for now, because um, we're not actually going to populate it. So that's our directives. Okay, so let's have a look at doing some speech output, because that's really what we want to achieve here, isn't it? Okay. Right. Um, let's go and have a look at what the speech output looks like. It should be fairly simple. There we are. So we've got the type, which we've already done, and we've got basically text and SSML. Okay. Right. Okay, so I think I think I know what we can do here. Let's create a, a text. Oops, in the wrong place. We're gonna create it there. We're working in our responses. Let's create a class called um, text output. Put not pit. Okay. Um. Make it public. So um, we've got a type, but we already know what the type is. Uh, so we don't actually have to. We can we can pre-populate our type here. So this is a required field. Um, so what we're going to say is a public string type, and we'll fat arrow that to read plain text because I think that's what it said it was called. Plain text, yeah. Let's just grab that piece of text and stick that in there. So that's going to be our type. We filled in for us when we choose to create a, uh, a text output object. It's going to fill the type in for us. Uh, so this is a required element. Bring our using statement in. And um, it's also uh, a JSON property, so we want it to to serialize into a JSON property. A 
it's in property of type. And of course, we're actually deriving this from the iSpeech interface. I need to get the using statement in for that. Okay, and then it was um, just some text, wasn't it? So let's pull these two parameters in, these two attributes in. And it was text, and then it'd just be some, just a string called text. And it would be great if I could type. There we go. So what we're we getting here. Okay, right. So we need to go back and adjust our interface. We don't need the setters. Because we, we're actually going to force it to actually to be plain text without us having to to do actually a, a set itself so um, let's go to our interfaces and um, speech so actually it's going all the way back to here this is just got to have a get in there um, we don't want it to be public it's just a property there we go I've sorted that out okay so um do join us over on on discord um actually while uh, we've got a few people on i'll just pop over to discord and just show you um our latest crew member uh, let's go to discord which is uh, here so um as we're getting close to that um that 50 follower target uh, to help us get to affiliate and if you haven't followed it'd be great if you would do um We've got our first emote that's been designed for me. This is a little alien here, a little space alien who's just joined the crew. Um, we're looking for a name for the space alien. So if you have any ideas, um, pop over to Discord. In this Name the Space Alien channel, you'll find his picture. And there's some people who have already put some um, some guesses in there or some, some suggestions. And this M range will be um, if you feel stable. Thank you for the suggestions. Um, so yeah, do pop across there, and if you can think of a really good uh, name for our little character here, who will be our hype emote, um, then do put them in there, or vote on the suggestions that are already in there. Um, I do intend to get some more um, of these um, emotes with picturing the same character made up, but uh, this is a basically just trial out, find out if the artist I'd chosen was, uh, could do what I wanted, and I think he's done a great job, a little cartoony space alien for me there for, for the channel. Okay, so that's uh, that's that. Um, right, so um, we've got our text output here. So the other one was the SSML output for speech. Let's go and have a look at that. So it's basically the same, except it's got SSML in. Okay. So it's basically a string with markup language in it. And it's a required thing okay so let's do that so uh, once again we're going to create a response and this will be um, under the class this will be SSML speech with SSML you can um, you can do things that have it whisper or place evident, uh, emphasis on the speech which is quite useful but um, we won't be really using it just yet so let's go to that public class and um, what we can basically do inherit from um, iSpeech bring that in and um, we should just be able to basically pull this through now what was this value called wasn't text, I don't think it was probably SSML. Let's quick look. Yes, it was SSML, so we'll just change the name of that. SSML. 
the mill. Okay. So we've got. Um, so what we'll do is we'll just build the card as well. Um, we won't bother with reprompts uh, in this stream or with the directives. At least we'll try not to deal with those. Speech we've done. Text output directives. Okay. So there's this card. Um, let's go and have a look at what cards do. Card object. So we can only include it when sending these types of events, which is really all we're, we're only co coding these launch requests, intent requests, the only ones we've actually done. And we haven't done the can fulfill or the other one um, that we looked at last time. So we've got basically a simple or a standard. I think we'll stick with simple or standard um, for now. That should be enough to get us started. So let's add a class. Uh, simple card. And we'll inherit from iCard. Um, we'll need to bring the using statement for that in. Um, oh, I think we've forgotten something with our SSML output here that says plain text. So we need to change it to actually be what the SSML, and it's just SSML in capital, so we can do that. SSML, that's the type. Okay, we can probably borrow some of this code here for our card. Okay, pop that in there. Um, so. Let's pop back to the documentation. I find it hard to remember all the documentation actually. So we got simple and standard are the two different types. So we've got a title and we've got some content. Not applicable for standards, only applicable for simple. So we do simple first and simple. So okay, so we have text for the standard and content for symbol for simple. Okay, right, let's try and remember that. So we'd have uh, this would be simple, um, and we had content. Hi, oh, Adam, the Hubmeister's joined us. Thank you very much for making it. Um, it's brilliant. So thank you. Uh, it's nice to see nice to see uh, some some people in the in the chat. Uh, do do um, ask questions or chat with each other. There is a bot in chat. Um, so uh, many of you will know my interest in rockets. Uh, we did uh, create a launches command on one of the episode zero. Um, streams the test streams um this gives you a list of um rocket launches coming up and we've got this um at the moment you probably know that at the weekend um spacex launched their crew dragon capsule to the space station which uh, successfully docked yesterday and that's due for splashdown i think it's staying docked for five days and then we'll splash down off the florida coast um sometime um gareth Welcome. Good evening. Hope you hope you're doing well. I haven't uh, seen your stream recently, but so looking forward to your next stream. Um, well, I think you you've been working on um, some stream deck uh, stuff, I believe. So I shall um, certainly be following that because now I've got my stream deck. It's um, certainly want to be able to uh, to program it to do some of the things that um, you know it doesn't do out the box. As I was saying, the next um, the next rocket launch we're looking forward to is Falcon Heavy. Um, I don't know if you remember, it's probably about 13 months ago now when the Falcon Heavy um, demo launch went off. It was probably the most exciting thing since the moon landing for me. So 
a wonderful spectacle, especially when the two um, the two boosters land in tandem back at uh, Cape Canaveral. So you're going to be um, possibly tomorrow or Wednesday, Gareth. That'd be brilliant. I think um, either of those days really be good for me to to catch you. Yeah, um, Jeff's library is uh, is what I've got. I've got that down on my um, on my la on my PC now. So I I, I have to do a little little play with it. I've got a a very basic um, button that comes up and you press it and it does something. But what I want to do, I've got a blink light, one of these um, blink light things, which uh, indicates when you're busy on Skype, so that um, if my family walk into my office and it's red, then now I'm on the phone or in a meeting. Uh, so I wanted to maybe play with um, controlling that, making it flash and blink and change colour from the Stream Deck. So that's where one of the things I, I was planning to do. I did download the Blink-like stuff, but um, their SDK, the documentation is pretty good, but the example program is pretty difficult to follow. So, um, yeah, you're working F-sharp, and I think... Um, I think I'd like to try do something in F sharp, but um, yeah, you know, you know, I, I have uh, I have made a, a good effort to learn some F sharp, and I got a fair way with, with my um, my Slack library in F sharp. Uh, just there's a lot of drudge work involved in in coding up a Slack library, and uh, I did the kind of basics for it and didn't get much further than that. So I would like to get back into F some F sharp. But I think what well, following your stream and looking how you do that do that work will be uh, very interesting. Yeah, I, we could look at things like L Mission F Sharp on stream. Um, I think you know I think Gareth does it so much better than I could. Uh, the F Sharp stuff. Um, I don't have a tremendous amount of time to play with different languages. Um, you know, I have a full-time job, and then I've got some family commitments and things like that. So, I tend to have a, a play with um, different things on on a Saturday morning. Really, is when I get to kind of look at different languages or, or try something new. And I tend to get absorbed in doing um, in doing work on my bot. So I've got to, and the, the bot that's in chat at the moment does have a um, reasonably full featured uh, text adventure built into it and it really needs finishing off because there's an awful lot of rooms that uh, need to be um need to be completed on that so i tend to work on that in fact on, on one of the future streams from a break from doing things like this alexa skill we'll actually go back and have a look at the bot and i'll show you how that actually does its text adventure and we'll create a few few caves for the colossal caves which are in there uh, okay. Oh, you discovered the, the skeet command. The command I'm really f uh, proud of in um, in my bot is the ask command. Though, so um, if you type ask, exclamation point ask and then uh, let's say who is John Skeet, the bot will do its best to answer that question. Uh, let's see what it comes back with. There, it's come back with a, a link there. Sometimes it comes back with with text as well. So you click on that link, it will um, talk about John. Um, about John. Oh, someone's done the old woodchuck chuck. Yeah, so there's a, it's a cool down on that, Gareth. So you'll be um, in a cool down at the moment. But it will answer most questions. Um, the favourite one is what's the airspeed velocity of a... Um, of a, a swallow, and it will come back and say, "Do you mean, um, do you mean European or African?" So yeah, it's 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 quite good. And also, is the answer forty two? It'll do it'll do all that. But you're you're on a cool down at the moment for um for the ask command. It's about um ten minutes. Um, I w um if you um we get to the point where we've got VA VIPs and um and uh, subscribers. Hopefully, if the if we do get that last f that last five followers, then they'll be um exempt from the cooldown but uh, it is a good way of really spamming my chat um, but there are some other commands in there so if you type uh, exclamation point help you find some other commands and also we've got nightbot in chat which is uh, doing my moderating for me and it's got a few custom commands as well but they're mainly around information like um, the discord and the um, and the github uh, locations um, I am on Twitter so um, 
You can follow me on Twitter at, at CodeBaseAlpha. I'm pretty much a noob on Twitter, so um, you'll have to kind of excuse my use of it. I'm learning very slowly about uh, how to use it um, and building up a couple of followers on there and choosing the right people to follow. It does seem to kind of spam with me lots of stuff in my, um, I don't know what you call it, the, 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 the series of tweets that come up. There's lots of tweets from people I haven't followed and, and there's adverts and things appearing there. So I'm a bit of a noob to try and get that sorted out. Okay, back to this then. So we've got uh, our simple card, which seems just to consist of um, tweet deck. Yes. Well, actually, I've got a um, I've got a few buttons on my stream deck which do send out tweets, but you're limited. I think you can only send one tweet in 24 hours, I believe, um, from the stream deck. So that's another thing. The stream deck is something else you're having to get to and used to and um, work out what I can do with it. It seems very powerful. Um, much more powerful than um, than I'm using it for, really. Okay, so let's get back to this. So we've got our uh, simple card. Let's just make sure we need. There's nothing else. So it's yeah. So a string contains the title of the card. So it looks like we do need a, a title as well. Then. Okay, so let's put the title in. I'll just copy this. title okay let's pop back was that a required field it wasn't neither was content well I think actually it probably is isn't it because we're working in the simple yeah we're working in the simple case and then the next one would be a standard card so let's do one of those and then that's probably enough for cards Okay, add a class, standard card. I'll make that public as well. And um, what we'll do is just grab what we had in here for um, for the simple card and copy that across. And this was called text. Bring our using statement in, and we need to derive that from my card. Not my crad, my card. Did we do that with the simple card? We did. Okay, and then there's looks like we can have an image on here. Is the title at the top of the screen meant to be the right at the top? Yeah, um, I've got I've got some I've got some things to do with the layout. So what I did, Gareth, in order to get this um, these overlays, is I actually um, I actually just adjusted a um, a layout that comes with um, Streamlabs OBS, um, and it's not quite the bottom. I'm quite happy with. There's actually a hidden um, webcam win window as well on there, but because uh, I haven't got a webcam. I haven't got any key lights and I haven't got a green screen. Um, I'm not using my webcam at the moment. Um, the top thing there needs a little bit of work because it says obscuring um, obscuring Visual Studio at the top there. Um, so I just need to shrink it, move things around, shrink down the um, the window that um, Visual Studio is occupying, and that means also that my follow account uh, measure won't um, obscure stuff as well. Okay, so let's get on with this. So um, we've got our, what where are we? Simple card. Let's go back to our standard card. We've got text. Um, we need to bring in our interface. And I think it looks like there's probably going to be an image that we can put on on this. Yep, so let's have a look at what that looks like. So it's an image, it's an object. It can provide two different URLs, small or large. Okay. Right. Let's think about being there. So this is this should be standard. That's going to pre-populate that one for us. Um. So this can be an optional uh, image attribute. 
So do we dare call it public image? No, we'll call it card image. Um, Getting set that. Um, we need a JSON property on there of image. And this is going to be one of those ones which is um, we need to handle the null. So null. Uh, in course, oops, we need to just move that. No handling, we really ignore this if there's no image added. So we're going to need to do with a card image now, aren't we? Right, okay. So there was just two URLs basically in the card image, so we can that should be fairly simple to add. So let's create a, a new class of card image. And I think we'll stop building um these responses after this because we've got prop all we need. We probably don't really need to do this bit actually, but uh, so what did it say? Back in the documentation it says there was basically a small image URL and a large image URL. So we should be able to just do uh, public string small image URL. I think set and the same basically for a large image URL. And if they're present at all, those are going to be. No, they required. Probably not. Um, let's just set the JSON properties upon those. And I'm just called small image URL. And large. Um, let's have a quick glance back here. So you can provide two URLs for different size screens, only applicable for standard cards. Yeah, I think we'll just leave them as being like that, and if we do include them. We can glue one or the other, can't we? Okay, so let's call a halt to building the response. Um, what I'd like to be able to do is actually build a response um, in a kind of a, a fluent way, really. Uh, so let's have a look at building a response builder. Okay, so let's add a... Um, a class into our so I don't know where to put it at the moment. We'll just put it in the in the root called response. I don't think we've got a class called response yet. So you know these kind of the fluent we do have a response um what should we call it then? Skill response. Responding to an access skill, yeah, that'd be okay. Um, the way we kind of create these uh, fluid interfaces is you kind of build up the um, you build up the response by adding kind of um, uh, dots and then method dot method, so you can actually create um, a piece of data in a kind of a step by step manner, adding as much or as little as you need. I'm just going to have a drink. Hang on. So I think I'd like to try to um, to create our builder that way. Um, okay, so um, 
we need the constructor. So public skill response. Um, and what we'll have is a um, a private variable, which is going to contain our response, and this is going to be of type uh, Alexa response, which we'll need to bring in the using for that, and we'll call it response. We'll spell it correctly. Um, and we'll just set the response to be um, a new a new Alexa response. Oops, my typing is getting worse. A new Alexa response. Okay. So let's go and have a look at the um, the response object here. So it has a version response body, what's it complained about here? The name response body, if I put it in the wrong place, no there it is, response body. Um, response Oh, we need to call this skill response, don't we? Let's have a look see if that's sorted that. That's a response. So it's not happy with public. Oh, that's a, a follow. Mm, wonderful. Let's go and have a quick look. Don Benito Droid, thank you very much for the follow. That's 92% of the way to our target. That's absolutely excellent. So thank you so much for that. Really do appreciate, um, do really appreciate the um, the follows. And uh, I've had a fantastic response to the stream. Um, it's getting quite late here. I'm getting quite tired. I'm actually full of cold at the moment. So I do apologise if it's uh, going a bit slow today. And yes, uh, Gareth, typing on stream, the one of the hardest things to do, along with thinking on stream. Yeah, one one day, yeah, we'll both get the hang of it. I think you do brilliantly well, to be honest, uh, Gareth. So, yeah, you've got nothing to be ashamed of. But, uh, yeah, I think in, in in my case, it's taking quite a while to get um to get. I mean, I've misspelled it. That's what it is, isn't it? So, um, let's just rename this. Response body. So everything should be happy now. Uh, let's close some of these things down. Don't need that. There's a response that is happy now. Um, response body should be okay. Simple card, some card, card image. Yeah, we'll do the skill response. Okay, so we're, we're going to we're looking at the um, the response here. Alexa response. So it's got a version. We're not going to bother with session attributes. Um, so we'll just set the version. Um, so let's go and have a look at what. The example, so it's just got a version 1.0, so we'll just set that. Um, in fact, what we can probably do is um, we can probably just default it, can't we, when we create it. So if we just fat out of that to 1.0. We haven't got to worry about it. I mean, we missed that off. Okay. So it's all going to be always going to be response 1.0. Um, then let's talk think and type at once. <laughs> you keep going quiet. Yeah. Um, I'm not usually known for someone who constantly talks. I'm, so I'm really kind of working hard to to make sure there's not too much in the way of dead air. And that's really quite a hard job. And um, it it interrupts the typing and the thinking, unfortunately. So, yeah, think, type, and talk. 
difficult things to do. Um, so we're going to need now to have some kind of um, method to, to add um, some speech on there, for example. So we've got our response. It's got its um, version number in there, but nothing else. So let's um, have a, um, a public method. Um, and it's going to uh, okay. It's going to be a. It's going to return something of type skill response, and it's going to be called. Um, what should we call it? Add text speech, and we'll have us. We'll just get taking some string, which isn't with a text. Okay, so this is how we start building up our kind of fluid, fluent interface. Um, right. Okay. So, um, so we got a response, and we want to um, set the response here. Um, so let's go have a quick look back to our definition of its response so it's got a response body i'm misspelling things everywhere so it's being spelled wrong again look so this is going to be um response body response body is going to contain this okay so we need to create a new response body Uh, where are we? Uh, skill response. So new response body, and we'll probably tidy this up with a bit of some constructor magic. Drawing a diagram. Well, I wish I could draw a diagram, Gareth. You're the one with the wonderful tablet. So yeah, I'll basically I think I will. I'll demonstrate it. Um, but we'll code a bit of it and then we'll show you how it works and how's about that rather than drawing a diagram because um, the, I haven't got any, any way of drawing um, I'm useless with the mouse I could do paint I suppose but it'd just look awful um, but the, they're, they're, they're good for building up something like this um, which is like stepwise so you want to add some speech you want to add a card you want to add a directive so adding things to a response um, the way they can get difficult is if there's rules about how you can combine things because you're going to have to build those rules of combinations of different um, extensions um, into your uh, into your uh, Fluent API. Now we should be okay. Yeah, PowerPoint. I could try. I, I think what I'll do is I'll we'll code it up, and then for next time I'll do a PowerPoint or do a um, a sketch in. Um, in paint when I've got time to think about it and um, show that so it'll be um, yeah have a playoff stream I think that's yeah that's probably the best thing to do okay so we've got a new response and we're going to have um, response dot response dot uh, and it's going to be um, some text isn't it so we want uh, output speech so basically we're trying to hide away uh, this is going to be text output we're trying to hide away from the user um, a lot of the ins and outs of the of, of the um, response object the Alexa response so that they can build it up in a more kind of natural language way um, okay and then we want to return return this so new text output does not contain an okay so we better create a constructor for that I suppose but what we'll do is well, for the moment we'll just hide it away this is looking pretty I just want to get to actually showing you showing the um, Alexa actually talking back to us to be honest because uh, it's taken quite a long time to actually build all this. So. Um, 
And I think we're going to have to get constructor for text output, so let's do that. Public text output takes in a string text and it's going to simply populate text equals text. Okay. So we'll go back to our skill response and that'll be just text in there. So that should do it. Okay. So we'll come back and finish uh, finish that off a bit a bit more um, fully in the next stream because there's going to be a fair few parts to this once we get the actual basic coding done we've got some design work to do on the actual in the um, interactions with the voice system um, and refine that but also there'll be some some dialogue stall penner well thank you very much for the host thank you very much indeed that's uh, very kind of you so if um Anyone who's joined um, via Store Penner, um, welcome. Okay, so um, okay, so we need to have, go and have a look at oh, back in our Alexa controller now. So at the moment, all we're doing is bringing in uh, a request um, and not doing an awful lot with it. So I think what we get, what we'll do is we'll code up a basic um, launch um, a launch request and have it say something back to us when we say you know open whatever the the, um, the utterance that we've defined to be to that will you know, initiate our conversation with Alexa and with our skill. So, um, okay, so, so let's just set up our response. This is going to be a skill response. Uh, this is going to be an Alexa response. So we need to bring the using statement in for that. Um, when we set it to null for now, um, okay. So what we've we're going to have to do some things to to kind of secure our API at some point, but at the moment we're not going to worry about it. So you can see that we've got this to do here to ensure that the request is meant for us. There's a couple of other things we have to do in order to. Um, to kind of protect ourselves against um, other skills uh, accessing our API. And there's a whole bunch of things we're going to have to do in order to uh, satisfy Amazon's uh, certification uh, pro process. And we're going to do that by creating some custom middleware, which will be uh, an interesting excursion into something new that's not done before. So let's have a look at... Um, so we've got a request that comes in, and the, re the request can be of type launch request, intent request. I think there's a session ended request, and, and maybe one more uh, can respond request or something like that. So we're not too worried about that. Let's start building up our switch statement to actually process that. So it's Alexa request. Oops. Alexa request, and it's request body and in the request body we have a type knackbot knackbot thank you very much for the follow now now 94 percent of our way there 94 percent of our way there that's very very kind of you for the follow um if we can find three more follows this evening that'd be fantastic but you know we're just inching our way now towards our target and we'll, we'll hopefully get to affiliate and um, then we can have a bit of fun with some custom emotes and um all that kind of stuff which uh which we can get when we get there and uh, obviously the ultimate aim of the stream is to get in with the um the live coders team there's a fair amount of work to do that um obviously i'm very new at this uh, we've only got five episodes this being the fifth episode in the cam and we still haven't settled on a uh, a regular schedule so um hopefully eventually we can actually get there um okay so so if that's launch request and we need i think we'll tie we'll tie this up with um some pattern matching at some point which would be a bit more f sharpy 
um, we can um, make it a lot uh, a lot neater. Then the response is going to be. Um, so what we're going to say, we're going to create a builder. So let's create a, a var response builder. Because new skill response. Okay. And then response is going to be um, response builder. And this is where we get our um, our fluent interface. So we've got we've created a new uh, new response builder, new skill response, and now we you can see we've got this add text speech here. So we haven't got to worry about uh, the structure of too much of our response. We're going to um, build in any rules that handle the different kind of uh, requirements of a response. So for example, you, if you want to if you add text speech, then later add SSML speech. It will the latest add speech kind of directive that you give it will override the other one. So we'll, we'll handle all that later. So let's give it um, uh, some text to say, welcome to the um, dev stream skill. Okay, then we'll break. And then we'll just case default. I'll just break at that point, we don't do anything. Um, um, default is not available. I think it's just default, isn't it? Uh, and then at this point we'll simply return response. Okay. Uh, we need to resp not not longer than we void. We're actually going to return something back to the Alexa skill kit up in the cloud. So there's our Alexa response. And um, what we are here, can I implicitly convert skill response to it? Okay, what's wrong gone wrong there? Let's go have a quick look at the skill response. Oh, we've got we need a build, that's what the problem there is. So we've we currently are not returning anything. Um, so um, so we want a um public Alexa response build and we're going to return response at that point that's when we actually finish so we'll build, have a whole series of these ads maybe um, other things in there so then dot build that should take care of that. So we've got the right kind of thing coming back now. So we've got our uh, Alexa response being built. And all we're doing is adding this text, welcome to the dev stream skill. So let's um, do a build to make sure that build's okay. Yeah, return a bad request. We'll do all that kind of stuff at some point. The, bad, the returning a bad request actually features quite quite um, high on the list here of things we need to do. As part of the certification, we have to return lots of bad requests. Um, we're going to be checking our certificates and we're also going to check in that um, the certificate was used to encode the request and all kinds of things like that. So uh, that's all. The custom middleware will take care of all that for us. Um, it should be fun to build that. But that won't come in um, this stream and it probably won't come in the next stream either. It'll probably be in episode 7 when we start looking at, um, at the kind of certification requirements. Um, so let's publish this now. So I'm going to I'm going to right click publish gasp 
publish it up to Azure. Yes, Fluent APIs might be a monad. I'm still struggling what with what a monad is. I think it's I think a monad is a simple idea, perhaps, uh, which is wrapped in um, difficult to understand or penetrate terminology. And I think you, I think you, you, you started to say that a, mo, a monoid, and this makes it even more difficult. So, yeah, uh, I'm not sure, uh, Fuel Snowball, but I think um, maybe everyone was stunned to silence in the Discord by your observation. Um, we'll see. Um, I don't think anyone's taken up the, the, the gauntlet to uh, to discuss that further either, but I'm sure that Gareth had his thoughts on that. Okay, so that's now up in the cloud. So um, if we just quickly check that we've got our values API, this is the default API that obviously it gets built. Yeah, so it's coming back with value, value, value one, value two. So we know our website, our web API is up and running. Um, what I'm going to do here is probably find that I've timed out. So let's see what happens when we go over to our skill. Dado. I don't know what the rest of the Dado min uh, min um, Dado. Thank you very much for the follow. That's fantastic. Forty eight. We're now 96% of our way there, so that's absolutely wonderful. Two left. Can you believe it? Okay, so here's our, our skills. One thing I have done off stream, by the way, is I've actually um, set up an Azure Key Vault. So this, we have a, a, a skill ID, an application ID, uh, against our skill here. And one of the things we're going to do in the next stream is make sure that it's our skill which is calling our API. Um, I use this tutorial here to actually set up um, the Azure Key Vault. Um, but I'll go through that next time on stream um, so that we don't waste much time on um, looking at that because we're rapidly kind of heading towards my stop time. Um, if we can get another two um, follows before the stop time, that would be wonderful, but I don't suppose we're going to be that lucky. Okay, so let's, um, let's edit our uh, skill. Um, okay, I think what we're going to do is the invocation is currently live coders. I think I'm going to change that to live coding because I note that um, the team, the Twitch team, is called live coders. So we don't want to step on their toes. Yes, we are using uh, C Sharp, Dado. Um, so it's um, ASP.NET Core Web API. We're also doing creating a .NET Standard 2 um, uh, class library. And... Um, and now we're actually over in the um, the Alexa skill kit, and we're going to uh, have, a, have a play with this now. So we've got um, we've got our um, our dev streams um, skill here. Change the live coding. So we save the model and rebuild it. Now, in, back in our code, what we did, David, uh, in case you need to catch up, is we, we set up um, our web API so that um, basically when a request, an Alexa a request, comes into this endpoint, API Alexa dev streams, what we're going to do is respond with a piece of text. Welcome to the dev stream skill. Um, in the moment, it's going to just respond on a launch request so let's see if that actually works um this should be interesting if it doesn't work what we'll do is just return this piece of text no matter what and then we'll see what happens then so let's give it a go uh dado i'm trying to read someone else's code and see if it's it can still do it's been sick for months so that's terrible when someone's been off um so is is their code not um particularly readable or is it not um commented um, where I work, and we talk, we don't really do an awful lot of commenting, but what we do try to do is write code which actually is self-documenting so that the, the variable names um, and the method names describe what they do, even if they're a bit longer. Now, as um, Hubster will actually attend, sometimes that doesn't quite work out. It's still quite complicated. That's where you need your comments. But 
I do sympathise if you're stuck with um, codes that you can't understand and the person you, you need to ask is off been off sick for a long time. Okay, so let's give this a go. We'll build our model. It looks like we did. Do, I did a build and it, it built okay. So let's wait for that to build. And we're going to just try and test it. Switch expressions, I think, are in eight. Long method names are a pain, Hubmeister. Yeah, well, I suppose they can be. Um, but at least they express what um, what the intent of the method is. Um, if you have them too short, then... Um, not only is it difficult to actually name them, it's also difficult to um, to figure out uh, what they do. Okay, so here we are. So let's go to our test area. Okay, so we'll give this a go, shall we? First open your skill with invocation name, then, then start testing your dialogue. We haven't got a dialogue, so we'll try this. Launch live coding. Welcome to the dev stream skill. Well, I think that deserves a round of applause. So we have an interaction. Um, it's the same interaction all the time. If we say open live coding. There was a problem with the requested <laughs> skills response. Let's give it another go, shall we? It said like coding there, so let's give it another go. Open live coding. Welcome to the dev stream skill. So I think we'll call that a success. Um, so I think we'll um, call it uh, an evening now uh, after that. We've got uh, a little bit further. We've got our um, response object coded um, which is um, something that people wanted to see done on stream so if you uh, had to sit through it and didn't want to see that I do apologize I think QD was the person who um, was most vociferous in saying he wanted to see um, everything built which is what the essence of the stream is really um, we've got now to 96% of the way to our follow goal which is fantastic if you um, want to follow me on Twitter then please do so at uh, codebase alpha uh, the code will be published up to uh, github that we've written tonight uh, that's where our github is uh, there's uh, more than this up there there's also um, the web api that we did um, in the first three episodes of codebase alpha there's also the bot and also some catters and other bits and pieces a bit of f sharp up there as well um, the uh, Videos of this uh, this um, stream are retained on uh, Twitch for 14 days. I think one of them, episode one's about to run out, but they are all archived up onto YouTube. So this is my YouTube channel. So do pop over there if you want to subscribe to my channel on YouTube. Please do so. Um, be very welcome to see you. Um, our Discord for uh, off-stream discussions. And also naming the alien. Now remember, I'll just pop back over to um, to here. We we've got an, our new character here, our new crew member. Um, we need to find a name for him. So if you could pop over to the Discord and um, suggest some names, we've got a couple here. We've got uh, Alf, quite like Alf. Uh, we've got uh, Omega and um, Alpha Alien, Alpha. So um, there's a couple of suggestions there, but we need a few more. We can then maybe have a little poll on stream to actually name him. This is the first of the emotes we're going to have. Uh, so this is the hype emote. Um, and I'll get some more made, but we need to make that affiliate target. And that's just two more followers. As soon as we make that, then we'll um, be able to start uploading some emotes. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, I will say, as I say, I will code this. Uh, I will push all this up to um, GitHub. Uh, after the stream, it'll probably be tomorrow morning by now, as we're getting quite late in the evening here. Um, 
thank you very much for everyone who uh, who viewed. A special thanks to those who followed, and um, I will see you soon. Now the next the next um, broadcast is likely to be an earlier one, um, but as I said, if, if people who've uh, who enjoyed this kind of time slot after Dev Chatter, though he didn't broadcast today, that's um, what I'm aiming for to be a regular one. So um, hopefully we'll be able to keep to that. So with a uh, little more ado, I'd like to um, bid you all farewell and um, happy coding. <laughs>